Hello, this is Chris with Phoenix Gaming. Today we're going to take a deep dive into the homunculus covens. We're going to look at the different units that are in them and how they stack up against the rest of the army. First, we're going to talk about characters. Then we're going to talk about battle line. And we did it in that order so that we could also talk about characters being attached to their appropriate units in a very organic and smooth manner. Then we're going to talk about the other units as well as going over a coven heavy list and what we might see in it and how we could maybe use that in a competitive sense first up is the homunculus we're going to take a look at his data sheet it is t4 with five wounds a six up invuln and a four well a five up feel no pain he is a leader he's got a stinger pistol which is anti-infantry two plus pistol and precision hits on twos with a d3 damage at minus one ap and then his melee weapons are five attacks at neg one d3 with anti-infantry two plus as well he does have a master of pain so while he's leading a unit he gets the four plus feel no pain so does the rest of the unit and then he's got a six inch aura of minus one leadership when you take a battle shock test pros and cons for the homunculus we're going to start with the pros Giving racks a 4-up feel no pain does make them a lot more resilient than they really should be, especially when you can stack it with insensible to pain, which is the minus 1 to wound strat. That's a very good combo. Obviously, it's only really good into 1 damaged attacks, but it can keep them on the table against things that would normally shred our army, such as bolt guns or even just orc boys. If you've got a 10-man unit of orc boys, that unit could really struggle to remove the racks simply because of that access to minus one to wound and the fact that they've got a six-up invuln and a four-up feel no pain. So you're rolling two dice just to keep them alive rather than just one while he's attached, obviously. Precision attacks, while they're not super dangerous, there's some pretty cheeky things you can do with it, and we'll kind of go over that a little bit later. The six inch aura of minus one leadership for battle shocks is interesting. I think it's better than not having it, but the battle shock in this game is largely kind of weird anyway. And his enhancement does stack with it, which we'll kind of talk about in a little bit. Uh, his enhan enhancement's kind of weird anyway. Five wounds with a five up feel no pain means that he specifically can stay on the table. And then again, if you can give him that four up, He's pretty solid, and he's very good into infantry. Everything having anti-infantry 2 plus means he's going to remove infantry, and with a neg 1 D3 damage, he can remove, you know, bigger infantry units like Marines a little bit better than the, the racks, right? Racks don't have the AP, and that's kind of where they struggle, but we'll touch on that in a minute. Cons, honestly... Uh, he, he doesn't do a ton. He does give you a pain token if you include him in your list. He does have some anti-infantry, which isn't terrible. But ultimately, he just he doesn't do a lot. And like I said, I'm mixed on the Crucible of Malediction. It doesn't seem bad. But like I said, the, the Battle Shock is weird. And the Crucible is his enhancement once per game. You can force a Battle Shock in any shooting phase to all units within 12 inches. Those units have a minus one, and then his aura would stack for an additional minus one against those that are within six inches. It's not that it's bad. It's just not really necessarily good. I feel like there's just certain armies that it's going to be very kind of useless against. And the other con, and the, to me this is the biggest one, is that he only attaches to rack squads. And I really feel like the whole army would benefit if you could drop him into a grotesque unit. Only being able to go to racks... I think is what really limits him from being quote unquote good. Not that he's bad, not that he's great. It's just, that's to me the biggest hindrance. Being able to slap him into a rack squad or a grotesque squad, excuse me, and then making sure that those grotesques get a four up feel no pain instead of just the racks uh, could go a long way to making grotesques really earn their points. Cause right now, and we'll touch on it a little bit more later, but right now I just think grotesques are too many points. I hate that this guy's name is Urin. It's probably Urian, but we all know it's Urin. Look at it. It's U-R-I-E-N. It's just Urin with the E moved. It's disgusting. He's the named character homunculus, and he doesn't really do much that the regular homunculus doesn't already do. His shooting is one shot. It is a torrent. We'll touch on that in a minute. His anti-infantry precision is the same as the regular homunculus. His ability, instead of giving a 4-up feel-no-pain, he can heal units. 
So you pick one unit at the end of your movement phase. You can heal it as long as it's a Kronos, a Talos, a Grotesque unit, or a Rack unit. They heal three lost wounds, and then if you pick a Rack, you replace up to three lost models. And then if he dies on a two-up, he comes back. Not a terrible data sheet. Let's look at his pros and cons. His pros and cons. Pros, healing three wounds or replacing three racks is actually pretty solid. You know, Kronos, Talos, and Grotesques are our most durable units in this army. So being able to kind of keep them topped off with wounds is a, is a way to kind of make them even better tar pits. And honestly, like I can think of a few games where if I'd have had him, they'd have been even sillier tar pits. Because there was like one game, for example, where I played against Necrons and I... I was in a tar pit, but I was also tar pitting his unit, and we both just sat in the middle of the board for most of the game before he could even kill my, my Talos, but had I had him to just heal the Talos, it would have been a lot worse than it already was for that Kron's player. Casket of Flensing is, uh, you know, it's interesting. I like it. I don't like that it's a single shot because it doesn't really do a lot. And then reviving on a 2 plus is pretty good. I do feel like 80 points is a little pricey for him. I know he's got the 4 up invuln and the 4 up feel no pain. And I know he can heal units, but I just, again, I don't feel like he does a lot. Maybe if he was about 70. I feel like most of the homunculus units, not all of them, but most of the homunculus units could come down a little bit. Maybe a 5 to 10 point drop for a lot of them. And, and honestly, they'd still probably not feel great, but they would feel better at least. And again, he can still only attach to racks. We're just running into the same problem, although him attaching to a unit doesn't really do anything for the unit. But attaching to him to a grotesque unit, just so you can make sure you can continuously heal that grotesque unit, for example would feel a lot better than only being able to put him into racks and then having to keep racks next to everything that you want to heal. The casket is one shot. It doesn't have anti-infantry. It doesn't have blast. It does have torrent, but it's still very swingy for a one-shot weapon that you're really just relying on sixes for. You know, it has dev wounds, and it's 3d6 shots, which means you're going to average 10 to 11 shots every time you shoot it, or I guess the one time you shoot it. But that just means you're only going to average one to two dev wounds. And again, just for a single shot weapon, it feels kind of meh. I really feel like it would benefit from having the one shot removed, especially at 80 points. He can't revive anything other than racks. If we get a data slate update that isn't just points drops, which I don't think we will, having him being able to maybe revive an infantry model instead of just a rack could go a long way. Hey, I can slap one grotesque back into this unit. Uh, maybe it starts with one wound instead of max wounds. Whatever. Doesn't matter. Again, that goes a long way to just making it feel a lot better. He does suffer from the same issue as the homunculus. Again, he just doesn't do much outside of be on the table. The homunculus characters aren't really doing a ton for your army other than be on the table, hopefully soak some damage. Let's talk about racks. T4, one wound, five up feel no pain, six up invuln. They do move seven inches. They have access to one liquefier for every five models, one ossifactor for every five models, one hex rifle for every five models, and one stinger pistol for every five models. Everybody's equipped with rack blades, which are anti-infantry 4+, plus. their strength 3-0 AP. Each time a unit is destroyed by racks, you gain an additional pain token, and then if the racks unit is destroyed, you gain a pain token. Racks pros and cons, they are the most durable battle line unit we have. I know Cabalites have a 4-up save and a 6-up invuln, but having a 6-up invuln and a 5-up feel no pain and being T4 goes a long way to making them a bit more durable. And then slapping the homunculus in them can give them a 4-up feel no pain, which is still pretty swingy. But can make them really tanky, especially to 1 damage attacks. And you can layer them with the minus 1 to wound strat if you needed to. While their shooting isn't necessarily good, it's interesting. And having one to two precision weapons in a battle line squad that do three damage is pretty solid, especially with really easy access to rerolls. The liquefier is solid as well, having a 12 inch auto hit strength four neg one. The hex rifle, which is the precision, is strength six neg two three damage. So you're wounding most infantry characters on a three and it's going to be invuln for a lot of them or three damage so two hex rifles go through and you're killing almost any infantry character on the table like i said overall they're decent guns the problem is that 
for the points, they get outshined by Cabalites. And the fact that you can just slap Cabalites in the same transports that you can slap racks into is really probably why you're not seeing a lot of racks on the table. They can come in a five-man unit without taking the Venom, so you don't have to pay that Venom tax. Not that it's really a tax, because the Venoms are pretty good by themselves, but you don't have to pay that Venom tax in order to get those five-man units on the table and kind of have those multiple small footprints to spread out. The anti-infantry four-plus in melee is okay. I can't complain. Wounding Marines on a four with my racks is not the worst thing that I could have. The downside is that they don't have any AP. And then, like I said, if you kill my racks, I get an extra pain token. If I kill you with my racks, I get an extra pain token. Let's look at the cons. Racks are too expensive. They should not be more points than Cabalites, and I don't think Cabalites need a points hike in order to create that balance. Racks should probably drop to 50 or 55 points for every five. I personally think 50 is a good spot for them. Their shooting is too low volume to be really effective. You take it because it's free, but you've got to keep those expectations low. Every gun but the liquefier is a single shot, so you're just not putting out enough volume for it to be quote unquote good. Their melee profile could benefit from a pip of AP or just something like wound rolls of six have an additional pip of AP. And honestly, if the melee had a pip of AP, I think that goes a long way to justify the current cost of them. I don't think in the data slate we'll get that AP. I think what we will get is just a points drop. Even though Drukari has historically just continued to be a very, very low tier army, GW has already shown us as Drukari players that we're only getting points adjustments. We're not getting rules adjustments. The biggest con that I see for racks is overall they just don't do much. They're not good at melee. They're not good at shooting. They're very average at both, honestly. They can hold objectives and being able to just take a few five mans without having to take the Venom is good because it gives you some cheap units you could leave in the back for screening. But the downside to that is Mandrakes are only five points more than cat, uh, racks and they teleport. I could, for five points more, have a unit that effectively fills the same role as a rack outside of being able to sit on an objective and I could just teleport it. Grotesques. They move seven, and pretty much all the homunculus stuff does. The grotesques are T5. They do have a six-up invuln. They do have four wounds, and they are OC1. Liquifier guns are free, and you don't have to lose your melee profile to take them. The monstrous weapons are four attacks, hitting on three, strength five, neg one, two damage. They can't fight on death on a four-up, provided they haven't already fought that phase. Let's look at grotesque pros and cons. Pros, they do have really solid melee. It is strength 5, neg 1, 2 damage, especially with rerolls. You know, you are wounding Marines on a 3, and you're killing Marines. Two attacks kill a Gravis. All in all, it's a pretty solid profile. T5 with 4 wounds is pretty durable and chunky, especially with a 6-up invuln and a 5-up feel no pain. And access to minus 1 to wound in their strat. The fight on death is pretty okay. It's on a four up. I think for their points, a three up or a two up would have been a bit more understandable. The free liquefiers does them does make them a more versatile unit than they have been in the past. Having to sacrifice your melee in previous editions in order to take the liquefiers makes it a better take now. I get my melee and I get my liquefiers. The cons, they are way too expensive for what you're getting. If you look at other armies, their Terminator equivalents fall in that like 35 to 45 point range. And this is not a Terminator equivalent. 35 points a model is just way too much for what they do. They need to hit probably around 30. Arguably could be cheaper, but I think 30 is the first checkpoint. And then we see how they go. You can't place a character in them. If you could keep them at 35, but put a homunculus in there to give them a 4 plus plus plus, you know, the feel no pain, got to throw that third one in there, then I think they are worth their points without access to the homunculus and any kind of real buffs. They just need to go down in points. There's no reason for them to be sitting where they're at. And honestly, I don't even understand why they haven't gotten a points adjustment yet. It's not like players have been spamming them. They take up way too much space in transports. Taking up three slots at at 35 points and their given profile and usage is, again, absurd. 
a nice way to fix them in the data slate is to maybe have them take two slots or let them have an, a homunculus or bring their points down. Like we've now just come up with three different options that we could do in the data slate. I know which one we're getting, but it's kind of a disappointment to know that's what we're getting. Overall, it's just another unit that struggles to find a real role within the army. I do think with a points drop, they could be an enticing take for a bully unit. Marching onto an objective and trying to take it from things with less OC than them. And just relying on your weight of dice to try to clear it out. Pretty solid. I do think OC1 also holds them back from really standing out in this role. Kronos. Uh, I'm not going to talk about them a ton. We've talked about them quite a bit. Our friends over at Proxy Hammer have touched on them a bit as well. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time here. If you want to know more about them, drop a, a comment and we'll talk about them. But we've talked about them quite a bit. Pros and cons, we all know what it is and how it has its uses. 50 points is really cheap for the chassis. It's T7, 7 wounds, 3 up save, 6 up invuln, 5 up feel no pain. Same access to minus one to wound strat. It does refund a pain token on a four up with a nine inch aura. Again, I'm not spending a ton of time here. We've talked about them a lot. The biggest cons is that the shooting and the melee is kind of lackluster, but that's not its role. And that's arguably why it's so cheap. And just like most of the homunculus stuff, there's not really a lot of good strat support for it. Talos, we've talked about them quite a bit. I will dig into them just a little bit more than the Kronos because they have a little bit different usage. Same exact chassis. I'm not going to read through this data sheet. If you haven't looked at a Talos data sheet by now, you're either relatively new to the army or you're just one of the people who plays them because you like a specific branch of the army. You know, you like the Cabalites or you like the Witches and you just don't get into the homunculus stuff. And that's fine. Talos pros and cons, they are fairly cheap for what you get. 90 points gives you the same exact chassis as the Kronos, but with better shooting and melee options. There aren't really any bad loadout options. It's just you build it for specific roles. They have really good volume in melee, regardless of what loadout you take, and you can specialize, which is what I was talking about with the roles. Splinter cannons and chain flails can be very good for anti-infantry and horde. Macro scalpel or gauntlet with a heat lance, you can anti-vehicle and monster. And then haywire can further specialize into anti-vehicle if you want to go that route instead of the heat lance. The cons is that your ballistic skill of 4 plus can be pretty swingy, even with the pain tokens giving rerolls. I will say their ability is also really good, just like the Kronos ability. Their ability is if they kill a unit, they are empowered for the rest of the game. So that means you're going to reroll advance rolls, reroll hit rolls, reroll charge rolls, etc. So they're very, very good. The Gauntlet is my melee preference. But I feel like the hitting on fours is just like a tacked on thing they did to justify it costing the same as everything else. They could have reduced its attacks to fours, and I feel like that would have been a better approach. But obviously, it's not that bad because I still take it. So my usual loadout for them is, and I typically run two units of two, but my usual loadout is Haywire, Liquifier, Gauntlet. The twin linked Haywire gives me more volume. It'll give me four shots, two per, rerolling hits and wounds. What that means is when I shoot a unit into a vehicle, I'm generally averaging a minimum of six damage into that unit. And if I spike the roll, I can kill some pretty chunky tanks with one unit. And even if I don't, if I can charge, I can usually get them just through weight of dice in melee, even though I'm wounding most vehicles on fives with the gauntlets. And I like the Haywire because it just shuts off saves. With so much T12, T13, 2-up save, playing into Guard or playing into Knights or, you know, even playing into things like Tau where all their battle suits are vehicles and all these armies that can just be like, here's all my 4-up invulns, fine. I'm just going to double the amount of shots I have and shut off your saves because I'm just tired of having to play against things with 4-up invulns. There's, there's a few... Marine vehicles that can get them. Almost all the Tau battle suits can get them. There's a few other things that can have them. All the Demon Engine, five up Invuln. So there's a lot of things that you interact with that have Invulns. And I'm just kind of tired of it as a player going, ah, here's my Dark Lance. 
do you major in Vuln? Okay. So my approach has just been, if you're a vehicle, I'm just going to make you pick it up. And if you're a monster, I'm just going to struggle into that matchup, and that's okay. Because monsters are less prevalent in the game than vehicles. So I just go into games against demons and nids, knowing that I'm just going to have an unfavorable matchup, and that's all right. Now we're going to talk about an example of a Coven Heavy list. This one, we're going to dig into it a little bit. This could take a little bit of time because we're going to talk about a few things. We're going to start with the characters. A homunculus, maybe the crucible, maybe the art of pain, probably won't be starting on the table for this list. Although I would probably give it the art of pain, still start with it on the table. Then after I get that first pain token, jump it into the transport and do my turn. I'm probably still taking Lilith and the succubus. Not because the witches are good, but because Lilith and the Succubus are excellent for clearing out infantry. And they're actually pretty solid into certain things. Even wounding on fives, you're going to be throwing enough dice that they're going to not feel terrible. You could drop these if you wanted to really lean into the Homunculus Coven, or at least one of the units. I just personally love the Lilith-Succubus interaction and the fight first that the characters have and give the unit are a really good charge deterrent when you're playing against other melee armies. You can plant them near an objective, and you can really make your opponent think twice about whether they want to come in there. Not because, again, not because the witches are necessarily scary, but the buffs that they get from the characters and the characters themselves will clear out most infantry units. They do give you an additional pain token if you take at least one of them, so that is worth to me. If you do drop, for example, the Succubus and Witches, it'll free up enough points that you could maybe bring two more, another unit of two Talos. If you drop them both, obviously you can bring more of a lot of things. You could bring more Homunculus, more racks. That's really going to be your choice. Personally, like I said, I'm bringing at least one so I can get that extra pain token and they can do what they do. You're in Rackarth. He'll start on the table so that I can make sure he's in position to heal key units. Our battle lines, I'm going to bring one unit of 10 racks. Obviously, they're all going to get their guns. We're going to slap the homunculus in that specific unit to maximize the four up, feel no pain. We're going to bring two units of five racks. And that's just so you can have two small footprint units. And one of them is going to be for Urian Rackarth. And then if you don't take the witches and characters, you can load up on more racks with homunculus, and there's nothing wrong with that. It gives you a lot of durability you wouldn't normally have. Otherwise, I'm taking two units of 10 witches. And like I said, that's just for that fight first interaction so we can really try to clear out infantry. When we look at the others, I'm going to bring a Kronos. I'm probably only taking one. If you position well, one's really all you're going to need, although two could be good. And if you're so inclined, you can drop Witches and pick up another Kronos. You can drop the Ravager that I've talked about later to pick up another Kronos. Overall, this could go either way. Having two 9-inch bubbles on the board is very good. You just have to decide what you want. Do you want this buff unit or do you want a little bit more damage output? And with the list that I've got, there's not a ton of consistent damage output. So I'm going to take the damage output where I can. One unit of five Mandrakes. These are optional, but they are great utility units. We all know this. They're in probably every competitive list. There's no reason not to take them. The forward deploy is very good. The redeploy is very good. I play them like a goon. So I might not be the best person to take advice from, but a lot of times I position them so that if I get first turn, I can turn one charge of transport and just kind of have that one turn where I can position and move and kind of move block my opponent a little bit better. One Ravager, and this is just to get some Dark Lances going down range that are hitting on threes with some baked in rerolls. Because remember, the Ravager rerolls hit rolls of one against things that are in their starting strength. So it does save you on some pain tokens early in the game so that you could kind of bank them for later. Two units of five scourges. Honestly, just like Mandrakes, they're in pretty much every comp list, and that's because they are some of the best damage output that we have. I personally like running one unit with Dark Lances and one unit with Haywire. With the nerfs to Overwatch, you could maybe justify Heat Lances. I still like Heat Lances, but I just hate Overwatch. 
Overwatch does make Heat Lances a tough pick. I still like them at strength 14, but I understand why a lot of people went and said, hey, Dark Lances are better because you can outrange things. And I don't disagree with that. Uh, I've actually started running more Dark Lances. Recently, like I said earlier, I've also just stopped running a lot of Dark Lances and started ramping up the Haywire. And I feel like, by and large, that's been a much better interaction because of the increase in volume that I get. But honestly, you could put whatever you want on them. They're all good. I'm going to take 2x2 two two Talos. You could bring a third unit of two if you drop one of your units of witches and characters. Whatever you want to do is fine here. Again, my favorite loadout for them is going to be Haywire, Liquifier, Gauntlet. You may have other things that you like. I would probably consider some Heat Lances on them, but hitting on fours is kind of the poopy duty. With so many competitive lists and so many armies just having access to like, ha, I have a 4-up or a 5-up invuln on my vehicle, I'm just to a point where I'm just like, no, I'm done with this interaction. You're just going to pick it up. And then one Tantalus. And this is mostly for the memes. This is really how I play anyway. Is just, man, I love this unit. We're going to put it on the table. I like the Tantalus. It does throw a lot of dice. We just did a video on the Tantalus. Uh, we actually did a video on the Witches as well. I'll make sure there's a link in the description for those because they talk about positioning and what's good about them, etc. So keep an eye in the description for that. And I'll probably try to drop some comments in there as well. The Tantalus, pretty good. It's I think the highest toughness we have in our army at either T9 or T10. It does have a 5 up invuln instead of the standard 6. It throws 12 dice that are assault. Its melee profile is pretty good. You can tank shock with it. There's just so much going on there that makes it a very solid take. You could make the argument that it's maybe a hair overpointed. But I wouldn't say too much. You know, it's one of those where, to me, the Tantalus is probably a hard unit to balance with points. Because if it's if it's just a little bit too cheap, it could get a little silly. But if it's too expensive, you'll just never see them. And that it's just a fine line that we are walking with it. Let's walk you through the list. If we're taking Witches, if I'm playing against somebody with Indirect, they're just starting off the table. We're putting them in reserves. I'm not going to mess with it. I did a whole video on how to use them, like I just said. We'll make sure there's a link in the description or in the comments. The I'm putting 15 racks and a homunculus in the Tantalus for this list. I might, like I said, consider dropping a unit of the witches and the characters to bring more racks and another homunculus just so I can put the Art of Pain on the table for the whole game instead of maybe one or two turns. The Tantalus is an interesting take for the racks because then when you shoot with the Tantalus, if you've got the homunculus in there and everything, you're going to get a total of four precision weapons that it's going to shoot every shooting phase and you can give it full hit rerolls. Three of them are going to be strength six, neg two, three damage. And one of them, it is a 12 inch pistol, but it's still neg one D3 damage and it's anti-infantry two plus. Honestly, I think overall it's really funny and can threaten a lot of characters, right? And that's where it gets interesting because even characters that have a four up invuln, which is going to be most characters that aren't Drukari, right? Uh, even if they have a four up invuln, if your opponent knows, holy shit, this guy's got four precision shots that could come out of here. They're going to be more inclined to protect their characters and be maybe a little less aggressive with them, especially if they don't have a great invuln. You know, if you've got a war boss or a weird boy on the table, I am not going to bat an eye at all about trying to make you pick him up before you get to use him to interact, right? If you've got a war boss or a knob with banner even, either one of those two things, if you leave him where I can see him, I will absolutely make sure I put those precision weapons into that squad. Marine characters, maybe not so much outside of like an apothecary, but again, if I can throw all these shots at an apothecary and it just becomes like a five up or die situation, there's, there's no reason for me to not do that. If I can kill that apothecary early, why wouldn't I? And not only that, 
If you've got key characters that do have a four up invuln, there's no reason for me to not throw shots at them either. You know, like, oh, Hellbrick's out here, or uh, a Farseer is attached to this unit. I'm, I'm going to make you roll those four ups or burn your fate dice. I don't care which. And there's again, there's no reason for me to not do these things. So overall, I think it's a very interesting mechanic. I think it's a very interesting take. I do think, like I said, racks need to be just a hair cheaper. We're going to see how this goes. Scourges in Deep Strike against any indirect, unless it's very limited range. You know, if it's like a 24-inch range indirect, I probably don't put them in Deep Strike, at least not the Dark Lance ones. If we're talking Basilisks, they're going in Deep Strike. It's going to kind of suck to not have them for a turn. But at the same time, it's going to suck even more to have that Basilisk blow him off the table before I get to do anything with him. One unit of Talos is going in reserves. One might go on the table. If I bring three units of Talos, there's a good chance I'll put two of them in reserves and then one on the table. And then everything else will just go on the table. You could maybe make the argument for putting the Tantalus in Deep Strike. I can't necessarily think of one. It moves very fast and it is firing deck. So it's one of those where I can't think of a reason to not keep it on the table. I will say this list is one I'm going to be playing. I've got a game Friday uh, I'm going to be playtesting. If I can get most of it painted, I'll stream it this week on Thursday. I do have some stand-in racks that will be unpainted for that game. And the only reason they're going to stay unpainted right now is I'm trying to decide if I'm going to commit to them being racks or if I'm going to go ahead and turn them into a Blood Bowl team. Once I make that decision, that's when they get painted Unfortunately, I haven't made that decision yet, so I will have some gray models on the table. I don't like to do that for stream, but there will be a few of them. And honestly, I may still paint them as if they were going to be a Blood Bowl team, and then just not rebase them until I make that decision. Because they're on 25s, but Blood Bowl's uh, teams go on 32s now. So on stream, I'll be playing against Craft Worlds with this list. And then Friday, I'll be playing a very, very good, very top Top Orc player, uh, which we've talked about before. His name's John. Exceptional player. He's looking to get some revenge for our last game. So we'll let you know how those games go. Hopefully you, you jump in for stream and watch them anyway, or at least the stream game. That'll wrap it up. A uh, bit of a long one. I apologize. We probably have a couple tangents in there that can get edited out or probably did get edited out, to be honest. But overall, I think it's a very, very good video. We're talking about some units you don't see on the table a lot. They are a unit or a section of this army that I enjoy a lot. I've played them a lot in ninth. I'd like to start integrating them more into my list in 10th. So we've been really thinking about ways that I could do it. And I figured the best way to do it is to just go whole hog, commit to it, rip the Band-Aid off, and just dive right in. Some announcements. There are more updates to the web store. The link to that is in the description. We are only shipping to the U.S. right now. The inventory is still fairly limited, but it is much more updated. We have more product there. I do have a 40K league that I'll be in that will be starting in January after the data slate. So we'll do some list videos on that. I have an RTT at the end of the month that hopefully I'll get to play in, even if it's just as a ringer. So I can get some practice with some different lists. I do have a Blood Bowl League coming. We're going to start that in January as well. I don't know if I've told everybody this, but Blood Bowl is also a game that I love a lot. It's honestly one of my favorite GW games. I like that it's a lot more balanced. I am a I used to be a pretty big football fan, and I just really like the interactions of it. It's a fun game. So we're going to be doing some league updates. I'll probably do some either streams or recorded videos of some of those games. Some of them will be on Tabletop Simulator. Some of them will be on a board. What I will say about that is one of the things I want to do for Blood Bowl League is I will be looking to do some sort of weekly videos to kind of update everybody on the progress of the league. But my plan is to do it in a pseudo sports center, sports news show kind of interaction. We're going to try doing some stop motion with some Legos for it to start with. That may end up taking a lot more time than I want it to. But we're going to give it a try and see how it goes. More old world news has dropped, so we're going to stream that this week. And then stream games are back. Sorry for the delay. We're going to play against Craft Worlds Thursday. Crons will be on stream next Thursday. 
I don't know if I'll be playing against Kranz or if we'll have another player playing against them, but we'll get to see the new Kranz Codex on the table next Thursday. So we'll see how that goes as well. I am trying to convince my daughter to maybe stream some Sigmar games with me upon occasion as well. So look forward to that. She's 13. She's really new to Sigmar and really tabletop gaming. And she's just a little timid about getting on camera, even though I've tried to explain to her that literally nobody's going to see anything but her hands. But overall, you know, we're looking to, to get the stream games up and running again, get everything going again, get back into the swing of things for the new year and just kind of ramp it up. Thanks for watching. Big shout out to my hatchlings, the real Donnie G. Appreciate you, homie. Jamie, our lone phoenix, you're awesome. Appreciate you as well. And then all my immortals, Lord Wellingstone, Danny Boy, and Captain Too Tall. Appreciate you all as well. And then important links on the screen in the description. And then, like I said, some of them will be in the comments section as well. So keep an eye out for those. As always, thanks again. You guys are awesome. Have a good day.